And so it begins. Thanksgiving week is here and that means a lot of people are traveling. What you need to know to get ready. And our ride on the weather roller coaster continues. I've got what to expect for the rest of the week and if the snow will come back. Standing in solidarity with victims of the Colorado nightclub shooting, how a kit group is honoring them as the investigation continues. As the legal battle continues, the student loan payment freeze has just been extended. All that and more as TV2 News starts right now. This is TV2 News. Hi everyone and thanks for joining us. I'm Kennedy Gotham. And I'm Regine English. As you probably know, we're in the holiday travel season. With that could come some problems. This morning we got some Thanksgiving travel advice from officials at Hawkins International. And Olivia Sharp is here to walk us through their tips for an easier holiday. Hi, Olivia. Hi, guys. That's right. Today and tomorrow are some of the busiest days of the year for Thanksgiving travel. ODOT and the TSA have some helpful advice to ensure you make it to your destination safe and sound for turkey time. And one of the bigger areas we're going to see an increase this year is at the airport. In fact, uh, travel numbers this year are projected to be at 98% of pre-pandemic levels, which means it's going to look a lot more like 2019 than 2020 or 21 at the airports, on the roads, etc. Other tips for flying includes arriving with plenty of time to spare, as well as checking resources provided by Cleveland Hopkins on their website, where there are updates about flight status, checkpoint updates, and parking accessibility. Cleveland Hopkins has several different parking lots, and they anticipate they will fill up very quickly. But by going online, you can check to see what lots are open and how to shuttle to the airport. For those of you who are driving to your Thanksgiving destination, ODOT recommends leaving at minimum two and a half hours early. That way, if you run into traffic, you won't be stressed for time and will make the best decisions possible on the road. To know before you go by checking our website, ogo.com. There you can view information on active construction projects. You can also see road conditions, as well as look at hundreds of live traffic cameras that we have so that you can get an idea of what you're going to encounter when you head out on the roads. Make sure to stay informed however you choose to travel and safe travels from all of us here at TV2. Reporting from the Franklin Hall studio, I'm Olivia Sharp. Thanks, Olivia. Let's take a look at traffic around Northeast Ohio right now. This is what it looked like around 430 this afternoon and for how much traffic there is, that depends on where you're going. There were some big backups on I-90 at Chester Avenue up in Cleveland, and there were also some slowdowns on I-76 at South Monroe Road near Akron. I-76 at 77 was a little busy, but nothing too bad, as was I-77 at I-271. So overall, nothing too bad, just be prepared for some slowdowns. And a lot of students at Kent are getting ready to head out for Thanksgiving. Matt Mergen talked with some students on campus today. So Matt, what are their plans? And that's right guys, many students are planning to spend the break with their families and enjoy some holiday activities. The holidays are approaching and some students are heading back home for the break. I'm traveling up to Louisville and I'm probably going to be driving myself. No, I'm not traveling for Thanksgiving. Right now I'm just hitching a ride with my friend back up to my city, Canton, Ohio. And you know, we're going to have a good time with the family. I'm going back home, so I'll be in the car for the next three hours. <laughs> Students get a break from homework, allowing them to spend time with family and enjoy their favorite holiday festivities. It's just being home with family and um, Black Friday shopping. Probably seeing my niece and nephew because they're coming up. Yeah, or just the seeing everybody at the table and having everybody just together and really enjoying the moment. But overall, the food, yeah, got to go for that bonding with my family. We do like silly little traditions, so that's just nice. Many students are excited for the holiday break, but also to enjoy some of their favorite Thanksgiving foods. The turkey has to be the turkey. Classic. Yeah. The turkey. Yeah, definitely. Going out to see my family, getting a bunch of diverse food, and really looking forward to some sweet potato pie. Classes will resume on Monday, November 28th. For TV2 News, I'm Matt Mergen. that you could ruin your Thanksgiving, but maybe nothing more than a canceled flight or bad roads because of the weather. And Nathan joins us now. It looks like the weather, at least here in Northeast Ohio, is actually going to be pretty nice this Thanksgiving. 
That's right, guys. Good Tuesday evening, Portage County. I'm Nathan Welsh with your weather forecast. Now, right now in Kent, it's 49, feels like 50. Uh, it's pretty cool fall day, not super chilly, which is nice. Uh, that dew point at 19 degrees, that gives us a humidity of 25%. Uh, we got winds from the southwest at 9 miles an hour and visibility out to 10 miles. And as we look across uh, the state of Ohio, we can see uh, very similar temperatures, of, of course, down in Cincinnati, the uh, highest uh, with uh, 56. Um, but it's, 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 it's pretty much the, the same kind of weather we're seeing across. Uh, and as we zoom in to northeast Ohio, and like I was saying, very, very similar. Ooh, up north by the lake in Ashtabula, 47. Uh, ooh, a bit brisk, a bit chilly. Um, but as we look into tonight, we're going to see clear skies and those cold temperatures. Uh, it's going to be uh, right around freezing at like 33 degrees. It's going to, you know, give or take a, a few degrees there. Um, and with that sunset, of course, at 5.01, uh, us in the newsroom, uh, we have nice big glass windows that let in all of that beautiful uh, sun setting back in the West. Uh, it's, it's so gorgeous, uh, always, uh, especially for us as we are uh, writing all of our little stories and stuff. Uh, but that is all for now. Stay tuned. I'll have your seven-day forecast and more after the break. Railroad union workers are preparing to go on strike following field contracts. We're on the disagreement ahead. Following a devastating earthquake in Indonesia, the death toll continues to rise. More updates on that current situation ahead. The College of Public Health at Kent State University prepares students for careers in some of today's most exciting health fields. Public health professionals impact lives by monitoring clinical trials, advocating for mental health, supporting active lifestyles, and more. The College of Public Health also offers open courses for any major, including its most famous course, Zombie Outbreak. Public health students can even study abroad and are encouraged to join the Public Health Student Alliance. For more information, visit kent.edu forward slash public health. Public health, solving our problems together. It's heroism so brave it sounds like a movie, but it happened in real life. Multiple sources confirm at Club Q in Colorado, um, people took down the shooter last Saturday night. Among them was a military veteran. Police say the suspect killed five people and shot more than a dozen others, but it could have been worse. CNN's Amy Kiley has a story from the veteran who says he's not a hero. A warning, it could be disturbing t to some viewers. I still feel bad that there's five people that... <laughs> there's five people that didn't come home. But many people at Club Q during the shooting did survive. Reportedly, that's thanks to retired Army Major Richard Fierro and others. He was at the Colorado Springs venue with his family for a drag show Saturday night. He says he saw the shooter heading toward the club's crowded patio. I saw the ACU pattern uh, flag vest. And for me, that was like, there's a handle, I'm getting it. So I ran across the room, grabbed the handle, pulled him down. And that caused the shooter to drop his AR-15 style rifle, Fierro says. He adds that two people helped him subdue the suspect and one pushed away the weapon. The arrow says he took the shooter's handgun and hit him with it, saying, You tried to kill my friends. My family was in there. My little girl was in there. His daughter's longtime boyfriend died that night. The arrow says two of his friends got shot. So after police arrived, he administered first aid. Her husband was reaching for her. So I put her hand in his hand so that they could be together. I didn't know if they were going to make it. They've been getting care in the hospital. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Now investigators are working to see if the Club Q shooting was motivated as a hate crime against the LGBTQ plus community here at Kent State. Students gathered yesterday in the LGBTQ plus center in the basement of the student center in response to the shooting to support the community. Attendees included faculty, staff and students were, who condemned crimes against the LGBTQ plus community. After much controversy surrounding Twitter over the past couple weeks, a Kent State professor is weighing in on if you should keep your Twitter account. Stephanie Moore says it can be hard for people to decide what to do if they don't support Elon Musk. 
She described what's happening to Twitter is, quote, unfortunate. She adds it might also be a good idea to archive your Twitter data just in case. New information was released on the Streetsboro teenager who died by suicide. According to a press release from Streetsboro schools, 17-year-old James Woods was the victim of sextortion. That's an online crime where an adult pretend, pretends to be younger to convince them to share sexual pictures or perform sef, sex acts on camera. The Streetsboro schools say more of their students are being targeted for sextortion. Victims should call the police and screenshot any information or images still on their phone. We have the number for the suicide and crisis line, lifeline at the bottom of, our, of your screen. And longtime Metro Health CEO Akram Boutros has been fired just two months before he was planning on retiring. In a statement, the Metro Health Board of Trustees said his termination comes after an investigation into accusations of embezzlement against him. The claim is that Boutros alloyed over $1.9 million in bonuses to himself over a four-year period starting in 2018 and did not disclose those payments to the board. Investigations into the matter continue as the, Hi the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office and the Ohio Ethics Board continue to decide the next steps. Two more cases of measles has been reported in Central Ohio. That brings the total number of confirmed cases to 21. All of the patients are unvaccinated children, mostly under two years old. An official with Columbus Public Health says the investigation into the outbreak includes 10 daycare centers and two schools. The CPH also says community testing is on the rise. Hello again and welcome back. I'm Nathan Welsh with your weather forecast. Now, as we look into tonight, like I was saying earlier, it's going to be pretty chilly coming down to around freezing uh, by the end of the night. But we have a nice clear night, no clouds. I recommend doing some stargazing if your telescope doesn't freeze up. Um, and as we look into tomorrow, it's, it's going to uh, pick up to around 47 degrees. Not as nice as it was today, but we're, we're going to see, of course, uh, as we get into that uh, darkness by 6 p.m., uh, again, clear skies and some similar temperature trends. Um, now, as we looked across our seven-day forecast, um, it, it is going to be um, quite uh, sunny, save for the actual break itself, which will have some showers. However, that Thursday, that Thanksgiving, uh, it's actually going to be pretty nice. It's actually going to be the hottest day of the week that we're going to see so far. So that's actually pretty nice. Um, and as we look into next week, uh, it's going to be pretty much what, we, what we've got going on now with partly cloudy uh, once, once those showers dissipate uh, from the weekend. But if you have any sort of traveling you have to do for Thanksgiving, um, Wednesday and Thursday are going to be pretty nice. I would, I would watch out if you're returning on Sunday and Saturday. However, just, just make sure that you don't uh, uh, get uh, rained out. Um, but we do have some varied weather this Thanksgiving break. And I've been Nathan Welsh reminding you, Portage County, to go out and enjoy it. As the legal battle over student debt forgiveness continues, President Biden has extended the pause on student loan payments. He announced just a few hours ago that the pause will be extended till June 30th at the latest. It was supposed to expire in January last week. The administration asked the Supreme Court to reinstate the plan that was blocked by a federal appeals court. Biden says this new deadline would give the Supreme Court enough time to hear the case. Unions that have voted down this tentative agreement. Where do we stand with negotiations right now? There's certainly a path forward there. The railroads have shown a commitment and a willingness to reach agreements based on the recommendations of President Biden's Presidential Emergency Board. And that's something that we stand by and are prepared to reach agreements to go back out for uh, ratification with those three unions. With railroad strikes looming, leaders of four railroad unions meet again to discuss this. All four unions voted no on ratification and are planning to strike on December 9th at 12.01 a.m. If any of the unions go on strike, it would be honored by all other unions. The strike is due to wages and pay raises not being implemented. 
The death toll from the earthquake that shook the Indonesian island of Java leapt to 268 as more bodies were found beneath the collapsed buildings, and 151 people are still missing. At least over 1,000 people were injured in the 5.6 magnitude earthquake that hit Monday afternoon near the city of Sianjur. In addition to those killed, authorities reported more than 300 people were seriously hurt and at least 600 more suffered from minor injuries. CNN has obtained exclusive recordings of a Russian soldier describing the brutal reality of life on the front lines. He was recording his phone, recording his girlfriend back home to Ukraine intelligence and telling her candidly about the severe military setbacks suffered in the two months since he arrived. Just today, the European Union announced $2.5 billion in funding to aid Ukraine in the ongoing war and this stated they will continue to support Ukraine in whatever they, way they can. The commander's position was shelled, so he packed up and moved further back. But what about us? Aren't we humans too? We had 96 people in our unit, but now there are less than 50. You don't know what to expect here. Sometimes there's friendly fire and idiots shoot at us because they don't see our coordinates. Being mobilized is crap. Nobody can go home until Putin announces the order. There's no way to return. And if we weren't here, they, the Ukrainians, would already be at our borders. They would shell Moscow, Yekaterinburg, shell everything. My nerves are on edge. I'm afraid of every rustle. Every bang, every click makes me drop to the ground. It is a couple days away from Thanksgiving. You know what I'm thankful for? Cavaliers basketball, baby. Stay tuned to see if the Cavs got their revenge on Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks coming up next. Now after you feast, will you be on your couch or standing in line for Black Friday or patient waiting for Cyber Monday? Find out what you can expect on one of the busiest days of the year. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. What's going on, Portage County? I'm Josh Aponte, and great news if you like basketball, because we got some Kent State basketball news, and the Cavs hosted the Hawks last night. But first, let's check in on the Golden Flashes. Kent State guard Malik Jacobs was named MAC Player of the Week after three outstanding performances last night for the Kent State men's basketball team. Jacobs scored a season high last Monday in a win against Portland, and he set a Kent single game record in steals with 10 Saturday against Chicago State. Jacobs currently leads the NCAA in steals per game. Jacobs and the Flashes will look to remain unbeaten tomorrow as they take on the College of Charleston. And as Kent State gets ready for Thanksgiving break, the Kent State sports scene will pick up over Thanksgiving weekend. The men's basketball team will be in action tomorrow night at the College of Charleston before traveling to Texas on Saturday for a date with the number two ranked Houston Cougars. The women's basketball team will be in action at the Christmas City Classic Tournament this weekend, looking to build off their big win versus Oklahoma State. And finally, the Flash's football team will close out their season as they take on Buffalo Saturday at 1 p.m. And the Cleveland Cavaliers hosted the Atlanta Hawks here in Cleveland last night. Let's see if they could get their revenge from last year's play-in tournament. And here we got the Cavs huddling up, getting ready for this game. They're going to get things started here first. Donovan Mitchell with the steal and the Cavs with the fast break opportunity. And Darius Garland, he's going to pull up from three. That's a green light. Easy. And Donovan Mitchell running the floor. Spida with the hesitation, drives to the rim, gets it with contact. And the Cavs are going to turn it over here. And Trey Young's going to take it to the hoop. Trey Young finished with a team high of 25 points for the Hawks. And DeJounte Murray, he's going to find John Collins in the corner. That's going to be an easy triple for him. But here comes the Cavs. Jetty Osman is going to use that pick from Robin Lopez. He's going to get the push off. And that's going to be an and one. Spider Mitchell, he's going to get that steal. He's going to push it up to Jetty Osman. He's going to finish at the rim. And... He had himself a game finishing with 23 points. Darius Garland finds Jared Allen, finds Mobley for the slam. Put up those goggles, Cleveland, because the Cavs will finish winning 114-102. to 
And that's all I have for now. Make sure to check out any sports news over break at TV2KSU Sports on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. For TV2 Sports, I'm Josh Aponte, and have a great Thanksgiving, Portage County. Thanksgiving is only two days away, and with that comes holiday shopping. How to shop smart despite the rising prices. The holiday sh shopping season is ramping up as malls and stores gear up for the large crowds between Black Friday and Cyber Monday. The Nation Retail Federal predicts this could be the busiest holiday shopping season they've ever recorded since it started tracking in 2017. And that's despite historic inflation and looming recession fears. In today's Consumer Watch, Jen Sullivan has a closer look at how shopping centers and business owners are gearing up for this weekend and what you can expect. <music> Holiday cheer reaching historic levels. According to the National Retail Federation, an estimated 166.3 million people are planning to shop from Thanksgiving Day through Cyber Monday. That's almost 8 million more than last year. Today's shopper is very savvy when it comes to shopping around and finding what works best for them. South Coast Plaza in Orange County, California is ready. The shopping center expects to break records this year in terms of foot traffic and spending. Executive Director of Marketing Deborah Gunn Downing says that's despite inflation, growing recession fears and soaring interest rates on credit cards. We're seeing people overcoming that because they want to do something special this season. We're forecasting a really strong finish to the year, so we will achieve over $2 billion in sales this year, a record. The NRF says some Americans will likely cut back on other things. They're being more strategic when it comes to hunting for deals and comparing prices, but they still want to get into the holiday spirit after missing out during the pandemic. They may be dipping into some savings. We know that uh, some households were able to build up a fair amount of savings uh, during the pandemic or through some of the stimulus uh, programs that were in place. Meanwhile, small business owners like Allison Ash say this is a critical weekend for her store, The Wrapper and says shoppers are buying early and still shopping local. Even if there's a recession, people want to make it happy and they want to do whatever they can to you know, make sure their family has a good time. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. So with Thanksgiving just a few days away, what is everyone's favorite Thanksgiving dish? Because we surveyed some Kent State students over on our social media. So I want to know what, what are your guys' favorite foods? My favorite, uh, and I know I'm going to catch some flack for this, stove top, 50 cent, like stuffing, like out of the box. Mm, okay. That is the best yeah. kind of stuffing. I, I like just I, for me specifically. I know it's it's not super gourmet or anything, but I think it's the best. Well, I do love stuffing, but not that 50 cent stove top. I, <laughs> I like it from scratch. It's really good, like that cornbread stuffing, and I make the cranberry sauce from scratch too. Oh, so. I do like homemade cranberry sauce. So yeah. wait, question: Are we including desserts? Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh yeah, perfect. of course. Then yeah. I gotta go with pumpkin pie. Ooh. Pumpkin pie. Ooh. Yeah, pumpkin Easy. pie is good. Delicious. I always look forward to my tofu turkey. Ooh. I know. Mm. I know. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us. For updates on all of these stories and more, visit our website at kentwired.com. And our social media on all platforms at Kent Wired. And remember, TV2 will be back on the air until Monday next week for fall break. After I'm, fall break. I'm Josh Aponte. I've been Nathan Welsh. And I've been Raging English. And I'm Kennedy Gotham. Have a great night and Thanksgiving holiday, Portage County.